Okay, so this is the second video on section 2.1 on uh, derivatives in the tangent line. So let's find the slope of this graph, x squared minus 2x, at these values. So let's get the formula for the slope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, I'm going to use um, this formula here. So I'm, first I'm going to calculate um, f of x plus h. Well, f of x plus h would mean that I would take this function and I'm going to replace x here with x plus h, so I'll get x plus h quantity squared, and then I'm going to have minus 2 times x plus h, so that'll give me this term. And then, of course, you've got to subtract, as it says here, you've got to subtract f of x. So here's f of x, I'm going to subtract, and then the quotient form you divide by h. So I need to simplify this numerator as much as I can. So let's see what we can get here. If we square this, we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. If we distribute the minus 2, we get minus 2x minus 2h, which is these two terms. And then if we distribute the minus through here, we get minus x squared plus 2x, which is these two terms. Well, now the 2x and the minus 2x cancel and the minus x squared and the x squared cancel. So I'm left with 2xh plus h squared minus 2h on top, all divided by h. Well, if I factor the h out of these three terms, or you could just divide each term by h, either way should give you the same thing. So if I factor the h out, then I can cancel h over h as 1, and I get 2x plus h minus 2. And so now, when h, if I take this limit as h goes to 0, then the h term will disappear, and I'll just get 2x minus 2. So the formula for the slope of that function is 2x minus 2. So if I want to find the uh, slope of that function at negative 2, just plug negative 2 in here, and I get negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. If I want to find it at 0, plug 0 in here, and 2 times 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And then if I want the slope at 1, just plug 1 in here, and I get 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So that one, that one wasn't too bad. Uh, it can get a little more complicated if the functions get more complicated. So a square root's a little trickier. So let's do one for square root of x. Let's find the slope of square root of x. So for square root of x, basically what I would do is I would replace x here with x plus h. So that would give me uh, this term, square root of x plus h. And then I would subtract square root of x, so I have minus square root of x, and then of course all divided by h. Now, you might remember when we dealt with limits, when you had a radical, one thing you could do was rationalize the radical by using the conjugate. Well, the conjugate of this numerator uh, and by the way, you can't just plug h equals 0 in here because it gives you 0 over 0. Now, the conjugate of this numerator is square root of x plus h plus square root of x. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by that expression. Now, on top, you're going to square the first term, so that's just going to get rid of the radical and give you x plus h. And then you're going to have minus the square of the second radical, so when you square square root of x, you just get x. So you're going to have minus x. Okay. And now what's going to happen is, of course, you're going to have x minus x. And they're going to cancel. And then you'll have h on top. Now let's look at what you're going to have on bottom. On bottom, you're going to have h times this ugly looking expression. Now don't try to multiply the h through. Just leave it factored like this. Because generally what's going to happen is the h is going to cancel with this h up here. So let's, after I clean all that up, I now get h over h times this expression. And then, of course, h over h is 1. So I get 1 over square root of x plus h. Well, now I can let h be 0. If I let h be 0, because, you know, I'm letting h go to 0, then this becomes 1 over square root of x plus 0 plus square root of x, which is 1 over square root of x plus square root of x, which is... 1 over 2 square root of x. So the slope for that function is represented by the function 1 over 2 square root of x.
And now if I want to find the slope at 1, just plug 1 in here, and I get 1 over 2 times the square root of 1, which is a half. Uh, plug 4 in here, and I get 1 over 2 times the square root of 4, which is 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 fourth. And if you want to plug uh, 5 in here, well, then you're not going to have a nice round number because it's going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of 5, which doesn't simplify, but that's the exact value. So anyway, again, you can find the slope there um, using the difference quotient, the limit of the difference quotient. Okay, here's another one. Let's do this one. f of x equals 1 over x. Okay, now let's see if we can find a formula for that. Well, now I'm going to use delta x here just to show you that it works the same way with delta x. Now, so I'm going to have delta x going to 0, and I'm going to do f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. Well, f of x plus delta x, would that would make that 1 over x plus delta x. So that would be this portion. Okay, and then minus f of x would be this portion. And then, of course, I divide it by delta x. Now, what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to eliminate the denominator from this top part. And the denominator is x times x plus delta x. Well, if you multiply the first fraction by x, x plus delta x, the x plus delta x cancels, and you just get x. So there's, there's x. If you multiply the second term, 1 over x, by this, the x's cancel, and you get minus the quantity x plus delta x. Now, on the bottom, you just get delta x times x times x plus delta x. So I just brought that down. Now, I need to simplify the numerator. So if I distribute to minus, I get x minus x minus delta x. And then, of course, x minus x is 0. So that just leaves me with minus delta x in the numerator. But look, I have a factor of delta x in the denominator as well. So if I factor minus delta x, I mean, if I cancel minus delta x over delta x, I get minus 1 in the numerator. And the bottom, I still have this x and this x plus delta x. So now I can let delta x go to 0. And when I let delta x go to 0, remember x is not affected by this. Delta x goes to 0, I get minus 1 over x times x plus 0. Well, that's just x times x, so I get minus 1 over x squared. And so that's, that's the uh, slope, that's the formula for the slope of the function 1 over x. It's minus 1 over x squared. And so if I want that slope at different values, like if I want to know the slope of that graph at x equal negative 2, I'd have minus 1 over negative 2 squared, which is minus a fourth. If I want to know the slope at 1 third, I'd have minus 1 over 1 third squared, which is minus 1 over 1 ninth, or minus 9. If I want to know the slope at x equal 4, I'd have minus 1 over 4 squared, which would be minus 1 over 16. Well, it turns out that this formula that we're using is actually the definition of the derivative. So this, this, different, this limit of the difference quotient, limit as h approaches 0 of this difference quotient, is actually where the derivative comes from. Now later we'll learn some better ways to find the derivative, but now we can use this to find the derivative. Now, so if I want the derivative of 3x squared, then all I have to do is do what I've been doing. Calculate the limit of the difference quotient as h approaches 0. So if I replace x with x plus h here, I get 3 times x plus h quantity squared, and then you've got to subtract the function f of x, so I have minus 3x squared, all divided by h. Well, now I just do some algebra here. If I multiply this out, then multiply it by 3, uh, I get x squared plus 2x8 plus h squared times 3, so that's going to give me 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared, and then minus 3x squared. Then the 3x squareds cancel, and so I end up with 6h plus 3h squared over h, and I can factor the h out of the top and cancel it with the h in the bottom, and I have 6x plus 3h. Then if you let h go to 0, this term disappears, and you just get 6x plus 0, which is 6x. Pretty cool, huh? So that's how you can find a derivative. Okay, I'll let you do this derivative. 
But let me just tell you, um, uh, you do the same thing, except here you replace you, you, your function's x cubed. So when you replace x with x plus h, you get x plus h quantity cubed. And then you have minus f of x all over h. And then do a little research, and you can see how you can actually expand a cube and what the coefficients will be. So this is what you're going to get when you expand that cube. And then, of course, you're still subtracting the function from it. And then what's going to happen is the, eight, the x cubes are going to cancel. And then this, the three terms that are left, you can factor an, et, an h out and cancel it with the h in the bottom. And then um, what's left on top, you're going to take the limit of that as h goes to 0. And you'll end up with 3x squared. Now this last one's pretty nasty because it requires uh, it requires a couple of rules. But, so let me show you how we deal with this one. If we want to uh, if we want to find the derivative of three over square root of x, we're going to evaluate this function at f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as h approaches zero. So that's going to be three over square root of x plus h minus the function three over square root of x times h. Now, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to get rid of those fractions, kind of like I did earlier. So the common denominator of these two fractions up here are just square root of x times square root of x plus h. Now, I'm going to kind of abbreviate this. If you multiply this times that, uh, the square root of x plus h cancels, and you get 3 square root of x. If you multiply the second fraction by this, the square root of x is canceled, and you get minus 3 times square root of x plus h. And on the bottom, you just have h times this product. Now, you still can't plug h in because it'll give you 0 over 0. So what I have to do is I have to now use my conjugate of square root of x minus square root of x plus h. So you take square root of x plus square root of x plus h and multiply it times the top as well as the bottom. And then when you do that, notice I factored the 3 to the outside to keep it out of the way. Now, when you do that, square root of x times square root of x is x, and square root of x plus h times square root of x plus h is x plus h. So you get x minus x plus h. Well, if you simplify this, the x minus x cancels, and you're going to have a minus h times 3. So that's going to give you a minus 3h. And all of this other stuff, notice I didn't try to do anything with it. I just wrote it down on the bottom. And then finally, h over h is 1, so I just have negative 3 over all this stuff that was left on the bottom. And now if you let h go to 0, like that, that'll disappear and this will disappear. And so what you'll get here is square root of x times square root of x, which is x. And then here you'll get square root of x plus square root of x, which is 2 square root of x. So you're going to get x times 2 square root of x. And if you remember your exponent rules, that's the same x times square root of x is the same as x to the 3 halves. So you end up with minus 3 over 2 x to the 3 halves. And there's another one you can practice on down there below. Let's talk about where a function doesn't have a derivative. A function doesn't have a derivative outside of its domain. A function doesn't have a derivative at sharp corners or cusps or where it has a vertical tangent line. So here, it wouldn't have a derivative at 1, because 1's not in its domain. It wouldn't have a derivative at this point, and this function wouldn't have a derivative here, because you get a sharp corner. And then this function wouldn't have a derivative here, because you get a vertical tangent line. Okay? And then the last thing, freeze the video here and just read there. It shows you some functions and where the derivative would not exist. And then I'm going to end with a theorem here that says if a function is differentiable at a point, then it's continuous at the point. So remember, that only goes one way. If a function is differentiable at c, it's continuous at c. But it doesn't go the other way because, look, here's a function uh, right, right here. This function is continuous at this point, but it's not differentiable at this point. So that definition only goes one way. If it's differentiable at c, it's continuous at c. And that pretty much ends the first section on the introduction to derivatives.